George and Willie Muse were the grandsons of former slaves and the sons of tobacco sharecroppers born in Roanoke, Virginia in the 1890s. The two brothers were kidnapped as boys in Truvine, Virginia in 1899 by bounty hunters and forced into the circus. Upon their capture, they were falsely told that their mother was dead and that they would never return home. Their mother, Harriet, suspected her sons had been abducted for it was common for bounty hunters to look for new freak show performers. But with nearly a hundred traveling circuses in the country at the time, the chances of her laying eyes on her beloved boys were slim to none. Being black albinos made them extremely rare and an extremely lucrative attraction for a circus promoter. Their owners showcased the brothers in circuses where they were exploited for profit in a so-called freak shows. The Muse brothers became famous across the United States as Ico and Ico, the white Ecuadorian cannibals, the sheep-headed men, the sheep-headed cannibals, and the ambassadors from Mars. George and Willie were forced to grow their hair into massive dreadlocks, which, together with their white skin and bluish eyes, were exhibited as rarities. They were also billed as Darwin's Missing Links and Nature's Greatest Mistakes. The boys were not permitted to go to school, neither were they paid for their work. They were literally kept in slavery, earning nothing despite thousands of people who paid to see them. Their only rewards were clownish attire they wore for the shows and food meant to keep the quote-unquote assets alive. One of their owners had found that George and Willie harbored the ability to play any song on almost any instrument, from the xylophone to the saxophone and mandolin, and that made them even more famous and more valuable assets to the owners of traveling circuses. However, after all this time, their illiterate mother had not ceased looking for her boys. In the fall of 1927, the brothers were on a tour with Ringling Brothers in Barnum Bailey Circus to Roanoke. Little did the boys know they were coming home from which they had disappeared nearly three decades back. It came to their mother's attention that the greatest show on earth was in town and she was determined to find them. It was a tough decision to confront the Ringling Brothers who were powerful millionaires who also had the attention of the heavyweight politicians and law enforcement agencies. Harriet spotted her sons and went and had a seat in the back and as the brothers started to perform she started to walk up. George spots her first and stops playing. He elbows his brother. There's our dear old mother, George says. Look, Willie, she's not dead. The crowd looks confused as they rush from the stage folding into her arms and hugging her. A verbal battle ensues between Harriet, the circus manager, the lawyers, and the police. She refuses to leave without her son saying, They are my children. And she convinces the police to let them leave with her at a time when police were hated by the Ku Klux Klan. Later, Harriet successfully sued Ringling Brothers for the mistreatment of her sons, winning a large settlement consisting of back pay and fair pay for her sons. The two brothers later chose to go back to work for the circus as paid employees. From Buckingham Palace to the islands of Hawaii, they perform alongside sword swallowers and giants in some of the munchkins later cast in The Wizard of Oz. By the 1920s, they were headline sideshow acts and star freaks, featured prominently in opening day dispatches written from Madison Square Garden for the New York Times. Willie died at the age of 108 in 2001, while George, older by three years, died in 1972. This is the story of the Muse Brothers.